Welcome to The Chris Duncan Show. You ask questions and I answer them. Everything, super conscious, magnetic mind, transformation, creating a life you love and success. You've got questions and I've got answers. Welcome to The Chris Duncan Show. Uh, I've been contemplating what it is I should be putting out there into the world. So you might be listening to this on a podcast on Spotify or iTunes. You might be on YouTube uh, listening to this. Uh, This show is a a way or a place for me to share uh, some of the the information uh, about the superconscious, the the magnetic mind method, how to create what you love and give my perspective on some questions. Uh, What happened is in our masterclass, we get so many questions and uh, I love answering questions from our tribe members. And I've been thinking, well, what, what can I do to get this message out there more? So what I decided is I'm going to start this show. And the show is going to allow me to answer the questions from people in my coaching program, but, but give the answers to the, to the world. Samantha sent me um, in the first question, and, uh, and I'm through it. So I'm just going to type that in, and I'll read it out. Uh, it says, uh, Chris, when you start being it and living it, but things around you seem to be going wrong. How do you stay in the belief of creating, not fixing? It's such a good question because one of the things that we talk about is you must be it to see it. Uh, but when, we, when you ask, well, what is the it? What is the it that you must be in order to, to see it? And the it is you must come back to what you truly are, back to source back to that you are everything. We live in a a world of polarity where we think this is good and this is bad. When you're it, there's no such thing as polarity. See, uh, most of us would think that being rich is good and being poor is bad. You know, having having, uh, safety is good, being being vulnerable, bad. You know, we would would sense these two different things, being uh, good uh, is what we're aiming for and then bad is what we don't want. But it all comes down to perspective. From the, from the universal perspective, there's no such thing as good or bad. Let me give you an example. Uh, let, let's say we're out in the wilderness and there's a, a lion cub. And this lion cub is, is vulnerable. It's out there and it's being uh, you know, chased or, or played with by some hyenas that want to eat it. Okay. And then along comes the, the lioness and absolutely destroys the hyenas. You see, that was really bad for the hyenas, good for the cub, you see. But from a universal perspective, that there was no good, there was no bad, there just is. Does this make sense, everyone? There, there is no good, there is no bad. You know that you're not being it when you're living in this world of polarity, the good and the bad. So when I say you must be it, it's when you, you truly acquiesce to the moment and you're not in any sort of resistance to anything. Does that make sense? Whenever you're resisting it, you, you, you're showing your cards that, you are, uh, <laughs> that, that you're, you're, you're in a place of, um, of resistance, okay? So yeah, let, let, me, uh, let me draw, I'm gonna draw this out. Uh, if you're watching, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, on a podcast, uh, check out YouTube for the drawing. So, so down here at the, the bottom, we have um, polarity, okay? Good and bad. And this is the world that we, uh, we typically live in. We live in this good and bad polarity. And you know, we want it to go one way, we want it to go the other way. And, it, and there's, this, there's this swing of the pendulum. The pendulum swings this way, and then it swings back, okay? There's this pendulum swing. The, the, the bottom, uh, where we live in this, this polarity, this is the, the self-conscious or the limited perspective. Down here in polarity, we say, this is good, this is bad. And we live in, in this, this swing, okay? And, uh, and, and that's, a, that's a place to be. That's a, that's a place to, to live. In fact, we must have it. Uh, you, you, you must, in order to know good, there must be such a thing as bad. Uh, there's no way a contrast is needed. You, you, you must have this. So it's, it's not a bad thing. Does that make sense? It's not, it's not bad. It's just, it's just simply needed. But just notice how hard at this level it is to keep it one side or the other. Let, let's think about, uh, you know, food, for example. You get given an ice cream, you better, you know, you better eat it before it melts. <laughs> or, or then you get given, uh, you know, a hot food, 
Better eat that before it goes cold. See, at, at, this, at this level, everything's always trying to seek the middle. Everything's always trying to seek the middle. Does this make sense? So at the bottom level, everything's um, trying to seek the middle. You know, hot wants to go towards cold. Cold wants to go towards hot. It's seeking the middle. And this is the second level here where it's, it's seeking balance. So the self-conscious is down the bottom seeking polarity. The next level above that is the unconscious, not to be confused with, you know, Jungian unconscious field work, but this is polarity. This is seeking balance. And you go up one more level, and then this is the superconscious. And the, the super the superconscious isn't seeking balance or polarity. The superconscious is just information. It is it is the all. And, and, and what, what we've got to understand is if we're trying to create down here in polarity, we're going to always get the pendulum swinging. If we try to go up into this place of balance, we're always going to come... Uh, you know, we're never going to get good or bad. We're just going to be in this place of fear. But when we come up to this top aspect, the superconscious, the superconscious for you is one perspective in the field of all source. You could call this self, soul, source, self-conscious, unconscious, superconscious. When you can rise up, I'll change color here. When you can rise up out of your self-conscious and realize that you're the drop in the ocean, change the instructions of what you want to create and then come back down. This is where you create from because, because up here, there is no good or bad. There, there is no good or bad. Does that make sense? There, there's, no, there, there's no question about is this good, is this bad? So, so back to Samantha's question. It says, when you start being it and living it, but things around you seem to be going wrong, how do you stay in the belief of creating, not fixing? You must realize there's no such thing as wrong. Is this landing for you guys? You, you, must, you must realize there's no such thing as wrong when you're truly being it. There's no such thing as wrong from the universal perspective. There, 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 there's no wrong here. There's no mistake. It's all fine. What looks like destruction is creation of something else. You see, from our, our limited perspective, we see right and wrong, black and white, these sort of things. But, but from the universe, you know, the universe, when we think about our little life as a little um, dot on, on, the, on a dot of a, of a planet in, in, in the dot of a solar system, we're, we're sim it simply just does not matter. Does this make sense? And, and so, uh, so my answer is, is you're not, you're not being it if you're still in the idea that things can go wrong. That's the answer. If you're still worried about certain conditions and outcomes, you, you're simply operating from the self-conscious uh, perspective. So Samantha, we have that double bubble exercise um, becoming completely, uh, completely okay with any option. When you truly become it, you can arrive at success and failure, health, ill health, uh, in, the, in the same vibe. You, you, you are it. There's no resistance to all outcomes. There's no, there's no resistance to any outcome. You simply can just move to them. So your resistance is only created by the, the bottom self-conscious uh, conditioning. Great question. What a way to start. Thanks, Samantha. Appreciate it. If you watch this on the recording, uh, make sure you, you you register so that you can be on these live if you if you wish. Okay, so the next question. I see a few people posting in questions. Uh, the, the, the place that you'll get your questions answered is to go, you're in, are you in Masterclass? Are you in Magnetic Mind Masterclass? Uh, go to Masterclass, okay? At the top, there's a post inside the Facebook group. And, and there's a form for you to put your questions in. Uh, I've, I've got a specific amount of questions for today and I'll answer those questions. And then if you've got questions for next time, uh, you know where to, to put them. Does, does that make sense, everyone? If you're not in masterclass, let me know. And uh, I can get someone to reach out to you to get you enrolled in that program. The, the reason why I don't want to take questions from people outside of masterclass is because uh, a lot of the basics that we teach in the masterclass, in the coaching program, are going to answer most people's questions. So we just, I just want to answer questions that are above, um, uh, above the, the normal. 
uh, answers. Okay, so let me get back to this question. Parajet, how can we really hone in, increase our access to the superconscious? Or is it simply by doing recodes and getting fluent? Do you have a daily exercise? Yeah. Uh, so, so there's a three-step process to connecting to your superconscious. First, you must know what the superconscious aspect of you is, okay? It is not God. It is not the full source. It is like a, a, if source was an ocean, the superconscious is a drop. Your superconscious is a drop, meaning it, it's in the likeness of the ocean. The ocean is made up of a collective superconscious, but it's also not the whole ocean. Does that make sense? So, so the question is, is how can we hone in and increase our access to the superconscious? Well, the, the first way is we must practice accessing the field of our heart, okay? Uh, to, to access superconscious, if you go back to the diagram behind me, you'll see that there's the balance cross uh, that is, is right here in the middle. And this access, this shows you the point. The, the heart field is where you access a place of no senses, uh, out, out of body experience in no sense, where you get to connect to the field. Uh, if, you, if you look at remote viewing, uh, they were connected to the field and able to read the field across the, the planet. If you want to connect to the field, it's about learning to get out of your head, out of your, your thought awareness, out of your, your, your gut awareness, your feeling awareness, and, and into the awareness of information or of acknowledgement. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you drop... Uh, What's that, Dean? I don't, when you when you drop down into uh, the this this point of of uh, awareness, uh, you will you will feel like time doesn't exist. Uh, you know, we call it entering the wizard's gate. You, you know, you unlock the gate. You enter this uh, magnetic moment where you're just, you're, you're not your self-limited uh, identity, your perspective anymore. You're, you're simply returned back to uh, the superconscious, uh, which is, it's very, very cool. If, you, if you've watched, uh, can I ask it, the people that have been on live, who's done Recode before? Who's done the Recode? Yeah, a lot of you done uh, done Recode. There, there's, two, there's two ways that we work in the superconscious, which... I talk about a lot in my upcoming book. One is uh, intuition and reading the field. And then the other is in shifting the instructions th that we're living inside of, uh, which, is, which is good. So how do you hone in? Uh, follow the, uh, we do a, a, a process inside of a masterclass. Uh, the blue mist process is great, but the one I love the most is the innocence process. Okay, so follow the innocence process. Uh, also, we did a heart expanding uh, meditation to get you down into that. Uh, the third, uh, the third way is is to learn how to set an anchor. Okay. How, however, to to wrap this sort of answer up. Uh, we're always going into superconscious awareness. Awareness is so far outside our limited perspective. We're, we're able to go into it. So it's also learning how to know when you're there, when, when you feel in the zone, you feel outside of your body, so focused, so not in thoughts, not in feelings, in no senses, and, and you're there. Your great, great sportsmen talk about it. Musicians talk about being in the zone, channeling. They talk about how they were so focused. You're able to get there sometimes in heightened states of intimacy. You're, you're able, able to get there. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big basketball fan, so I watch a lot of basketball. And, and it's still amazing to, to see uh, – people play a sport where they're running as fast as they can stop and then have their natural abilities figure out exactly how far away they are from this hoop, uh, stop, shoot it, and get it to go in in this just remarkably accurate way. I mean, if you think about all the, the mathematics that must be calculated for them to be able to do that, it's so far outside uh, our thinking brain, isn't it? 
It's, you know, they don't think their way through it and they don't necessarily feel their way through it. It's, it, there's information that they are they're tapping into that they're able to do. So, so when, when we tap into the superconscious and, and how you hone in, the, the big thing is to, to realize this isn't, uh, isn't necessarily special. What's special about it is predictably being able to get there. <laughs> True. So, so it's not that it's a special thing. It, we're always able to do it. It's predictably being able to get there and, and step into the field. So, so, you know, there's lots of ways. The big answer is, is really practice, you know, practice, meditate, learn to get out of your head and into the field, learn to, to, to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Okay, this question uh, from Zamir. Um, if you're someone who has the goal of enlightenment, uh, and then in brackets, which technically can't be a goal, and also understands the massive value behind alignment and how to use the law of attraction well, how do you reconcile no desire with desire? I would say that, that whoever's asking this question is too busy trying to work out how it is instead of just doing it. That's what I would say. I'd say, I'd say to whoever's, whoever's asking this is you're so busy trying to mentally work everything out. So you finally uh, have the way it is. Uh, and the truth is you, if, if you're so good at doing it, then do it. That's, that's what I would say. Now to answer the question, if you're someone who has a goal enlightenment, which technically cannot be a goal. So there, there's a big assumption at the beginning there, which technically can't be a goal. So, so firstly, uh, you might be new to my work. I don't love the word goal. Goal to me sets up a premise that there's somewhere to get to and that I'm separate from it. So I don't, I don't love the word. So I'm, I love the word choice. So, so I'm going to change your question. If you're someone who has the choice of enlightenment, see how it feels different. If you're on the, if you're on live, give me a yes. If it feels different. As soon as I make it a choice, see, if you're someone who has the goal of enlightenment, but someone who has the choice of enlightenment, it, 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 you're choosing. See, when you're choosing, you really, you, you acknowledge that it's just what you're choosing, that it's just something that you can, you can have. Uh, and understands a massive value behind alignment and how to use it. How do you reconcile no desire with desire? You know, it's just so obvious that this question is designed in a way with a that has a belief structure that says, I must work everything out. I must work everything out. And so, so I'd say to, to this question is, is you're not in the super conscious field, you're simply trying to mentally work everything out uh, as though there's a way to work out the mystery, you know? So, so how do you reconcile no desire with desire? You don't. You don't. You don't, it's, it's, it's unnecessary to reconcile no desire with desire. It, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. Instead, you acknowledge your power, except you can create whatever it is that you choose to create and then choose your creation. You choose your creation knowing that what you're creating is not going to change you. Choosing your creation does not uh, make you better. Uh, having it won't make you more valid as a, as a creator or a human being. Not having it won't make you any less valid. So you acknowledge uh, that you are, you are a powerful creator. Acknowledge what it is that you're choosing. Choose it and create it. Uh, everything else in the question, unfortunately, is, is outside of what's necessary. You know, notice that you're at all. Choose what you would like to see manifest. Move towards it and allow it to show up, right? Follow, follow the system. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Ron, how do you connect to the superconscious, Chris? Uh, it's a, it's a good question. Okay. There, there's three steps to connecting to the superconscious in two ways. Okay. You can connect to the superconscious with direct communication, which is muscle testing. 
Okay, so you can use muscle testing. Kinesiologists have been using this for years, uh, maybe centuries. You, you, can, you can connect um, direct through muscle testing, okay? The other way that you can connect is intuitively, and you can intuitively read the field. So, that, so those are the two ways that you communicate with the superconscious, okay? Direct or indirect through intu an intuitive process or through muscle testing. So, so how do you do it? Uh, first, I must enter the wizard's gate, which is a metaphor I use for being in uh, being a super super conductive with no resistance uh, in the present moment, uh, the magnetic moment. So you must you must get into innocence, uh, which is only created by going through the field of your heart, a childlike presence. Many people have been on a recode with me before and and heard me giggle like a child because I'm in such um, play. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Why does he sometimes just giggle in the middle of a serious recode? <laughs> the, the amount of times we get that question. In fact, um, we we posed a <laughs> we posed a question to my team the other day. We said, uh, "Hey." <laughs> What is one thing that, that that people say about Chris the most? And one of my staff cheekily said um, that he randomly giggles all the time. <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> uh, it's funny. So, uh, so, so you, you you must number one get into innocence, which is a childlike um, playfulness uh, uh, energy where you're, you're outside of you're, you're outside of your pre-programmed definition of the way the world is. Does that make sense? You, you, you come outside of uh, I've defined the world as, as this because that aspect of you that self-conscious memory that defined the world as that is not super conscious therefore if you're trying to uh if, if you're wanting to be in the super conscious the first thing is you must come up and out or down and in or around or out or expand through that to to all other possibilities this is only done through the field of the heart and innocence uh, connecting to innocence so so that's step one innocence and uh I love breaking it down into in no sense. You, you come out of your thoughts and your feelings. You're, you're, you're out of senses. <laughs> nonsense, basically. This sounds like nonsense, Chris. Exactly. <laughs> There's no senses. So you're going out of it. Well, once you're, uh, once you're outside of your, your self-conscious uh, and you're, you're in, in the field, you're able to use muscle testing or direct intuitive processes using open-ended questions. Okay. Uh, open-ended questions allows you to go into a search for the answers with the field. And, and then that, that's how you're there. So, so how do I connect uh, in short is, is by using innocence uh, to, to allow myself to, to connect to that, which is what I really am, uh, what I really am, what I what I truly, truly is, which is a uh, which is a creative energy, you, you know, having a, an experience walking around this planet in a in a skin suit, <laughs> you know, in a in a skin suit, and and so once you once you become the creative energy again, you realize that you're at all. Your, your biggest fears, your biggest phobias, your confidence, your, your, you can be at all. Once, you are, once you're out and in, into this, this, this field, once you're out and open in the field, that's when you then can recollapse the, the wave or the, the, the universal observation back into what it is um, that you choose. So th those of you who have witnessed a, a recode or had a recode or had a session with us, we, we first take you out of your perspective to where you're everything. From here, we change what code that you're running from. We change, it's like, it's like pressing uh, the eject button. Do you guys remember when we used to have CDs? <laughs> you press the eject button and CD comes out, you put in a different thing that will allow you to play the world in a different way. 
most of us are trying to 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 play the world in a different way with the same the same program the same cd or worse uh you know uh, uh thinking that there's something wrong with that cd that's playing does that make sense we, well there's something bad with it in fact uh, the decision that you must fix yourself uh, and that there's something wrong is the number one reason why people never allow themselves to create that which they want. How do you access the superconscious uh, mind, which I've already covered, but how do you feel or hear the superconscious? Uh when you ask the question, you'll get the answer. In fact, if you're listening right now uh, and you're, you're here with me, just I just want you to think of a time when you, you made a mistake and got it wrong. You made a mistake and got it wrong. And, and just think of a time. Where in your body do you feel that? Where in your body do you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are saying it in my stomach. I feel it. I feel it's like heavy. Um, you know, I, I feel it in my bottom chakra. It's deep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, so with that, the change, change the question. Um, when is a time that you got it right? You succeeded. It was correct. And you got it right. When was the time you got it right? Think about a time you got it right. Oh, yeah, I got that right. That was correct. Where do you feel it then? People are saying heart radiates outward, heart. Okay, and so let me just ask, here's a real question. Are the two different? Yeah, they're different. You feel it differently, Okay. So, so you, you have three different communication channels. Uh, you have a communication channel in your, you know, with, let's call it your head, another communication channel in your, in your heart, and another communication uh, channel in your gut or your stomach. When you're connecting and reading the field, it's not that you get something different that you don't already get. It's about learning to become fluent in all the ways that you actually are communicating with what's true. So, so you, that's how that's you, you'll get, sometimes you'll get it in your head. You might get words. Sometimes when I'll channel, I'll get words and get clarity and I'll get sounds and it'll be thought of that. Other times it'll be feelings coming from my heart that I'll then have to process into thoughts, into it. And sometimes from my, my gut. So you got to remember, you got more channels in the intuition workshop. For those of you doing it, we're going to have you become so different, uh, so fluent in not just those aspects of your intuition, but all other aspects. How to become so intuitive that you never make bad decisions anymore. <laughs> it doesn't that sound great. You don't, you don't make bad decisions. You're able to know what's true and you don't have to try to work it out. See, the hardest thing is we all, we all think that our head needs to, uh, to work it out. I must work it out. And uh, just, just imagine if we had to work out everything. I already talked about how sport uh, would be uh, completely different if we had to try to work out how to throw a basketball through a hoop. So, so you, you don't need to, to work everything. In fact, it would be impossible to work it out. Yet we, we think when, when matters are important, we need to try to work it out and don't trust. So, so look, when, when you go into the field, you first get out of your body, but then the communication still comes back to your bodily vehicle. And then you're able to interpret it. So, so it comes through the normal channels. It's learning how to, to get out and into those channels. Does that make sense? It's not like there's a, a new way of communicating that your body receives. It's, a, it's getting a new set of information. Does that make sense? Do I explain that? I feel like that makes sense. It, it, it's, it's not new communication channels. It's not like there's a new thing that turns up. It's just a new set of information you're accessing and then learning to truly know what information you're actually getting, not just the information that your head or your past programs beliefs are making up. You see, many times um, because of our past, we will delete or edit what's actually the truth.
uh, and what's actually there. Uh, Diane's asked, uh, you know, I'm challenged to connect um, with my heart. How might I do this? Uh, it's it, There's not much more other than learning to, to choose and practice it, you know? Heart Math Institute is a is an amazing place for, for really learning heart coherence. And, and I've done a lot of work there and with them. Uh, and and they're, they're great. So, so learning how to connect to your heart is, is, is it's simple, hey? It's simple. Um, however, even though it's simple, does that mean that you, you know, you can just go and do it? No, it's simple to ride a bike, but you've got to, uh, you've got to practice it. Is it possible to live in the super conscious field all the time? This is a question I get a lot. So now I'm glad to have it answered. You know, it's just not wise. It's it's not wise. It's possible, I guess. Um, it's likely, though, you would need to climb a mountain in India and sit in the Himalayas and be super conscious because, you know, that's where it'd be. Remember, super conscious is, an S, is access to all information. If you have access to all information, you can't experience any of it. If you have access, you can't experience it. If you're trying to access it all at the same time, in order to actually experience love, there has to be the possibility of hurt. You see? Well, people will use love in different ways. Happy versus hurt might be a better example. Does that make sense? It's just, we've spent so long in uh, many of these teachings, trying to avoid the dark, what, what might what might be per, called the dark side, you know, the the the, the aspect denying denying truth, you know, denying it, and and uh, without it, you couldn't experience the good. Without it, you couldn't experience the good. You, you wouldn't be able to because that is that is how this, this dimension exists and works. It works in polarity. In order for there to be hot, there has to be cold. True? True? So in order for there to be rich, there has to be poor. That's how those polarities exist. And, and so if you tried to live in a super conscious field your whole time, you just wouldn't be able to have a human experience. A human experience is living in a world of polarity, isn't it? That is the human experience to, to bring you know, the truth that what I believe we're here to do is have an adventure of bringing our hearts into the world, taking our hearts desire, our hearts loves and seeing our loves manifest. That's what I believe we're here to do. We're here to go on an adventure to bring our heart into the world uh, and, and then to see it manifest and to know that as we're seeing it manifest, there's a possibility of it not manifesting. True. There has to be the possibility of losing in order for you to enjoy winning. It, it, there's no other way. We, we're so in love with this reality and it's so much fun. And so the idea that you can go to your super conscious and shift the instructions so you can get back to creating, I believe is what we're here for. You know, and, and Campbell talks about it with the, the hero's journey and uh, which is obviously modeled off Jung and, and the archetypes and everything else. But it's, it's very potent when, when you really get it. Can anybody be trained to do this work? Yes. What if your intuition is non-existent or you don't have any other modalities? That even better. You know, many times uh, people come with lots of preconceived ideas that they must fix themselves that they picked up from all sorts of other modalities. <laughs> and, uh, and this creates... This creates such problems because they just cannot put down the idea that they're not broken. And everything they do, they do to try to resolve their current identity or the way they are in a polarity with that which they already have. And it, it simply doesn't work. 
It's, it's, it simply doesn't work. In fact, I prefer when people come to me and say, Chris, this is, this is some of the first stuff I've done uh, because there's no unwinding of uh, simply really bad, really bad advice um, that's taken their power away from them that said, you must fix, you must heal, you're broken, you got to do this thing, you got to have this pill, go to this therapy, you got to talk, you got to all of this. It's like, oh, do, no, I don't. I'm way more powerful than, than that. I just need to accept that I created all of that and that it's not a problem. Bring it back into my heart and acknowledge that I'm absolutely amazing, acknowledge exactly where I am, reconnect to come in phase with the power of, of all and, and recreate. So, so, so no, uh, you don't need to know anything else. There's no such thing as a non-existent intuition. There's definitely a thing of an undeveloped intuition. Uh, but there's no such thing as, as a, as a non-existent um, intuition. And yes, let's, let's also acknowledge that there'll be people that are more talented at this, hey? You know, it's just a truth. I think sometimes in, in our society, we try to ignore natural ability and natural talent. You know, but it, it, it literally does not matter how much I practiced uh, jumping or went into the weights room. I was not going to jump as high as Michael Jordan. You see, he had a natural ability far above uh, my natural ability. So I'd also acknowledge that, uh, but, but I can still jump, hey, and, and I can still get to my, the max of my ability. So, so I think that that's um, very, very similar. Uh, also in the field, can you access souls that are no longer on this earth? You can, let, let's put this a different way. You can access information from the field, which is beyond time and space. And, uh, and you, you can, you can access information, not, but, but, uh, but, but no, but I think that's what you are asking. I think that's what you're asking. No, you do, you don't, you're not going to go access someone else's soul. Uh, can some people go deeper into the superconscious? Well, the, the, you know, it, the, the superconscious is one drop in uh, the ocean uh, and the ocean is source. And so, so the superconscious is, is just one little drop in this huge, this huge source field. So, so many people as they become more, willing to expand their viewpoint their their uh their ability to be super conscious can can definitely get a lot more information than others yeah um does this process um work on children uh i don't recommend that uh that any of the people getting certified in this work work with children uh, unless they've already got uh prior um licenses uh to work with children do you have to, you, you, do you have to have permission to connect? Yeah, I've, I've worked with animals. I've worked with my, my dogs. I've worked with lots. And you, you learn how to get create permission in their field. The, the, the superconscious field only works with permission, you know? You, you, you know, free will. You're not allowed to just to walk around and, and, and you wouldn't even be able to because they're, they're a powerful perspective. This is one of the most frustrating things for people who first learn this work. They had in their mind people that they wanted to change <laughs> or heal. And then they realized that that person was actually quite happy having the experience that they're having. <laughs> and it, it could become, who, who's had the experience? Oh, I'm gonna, and then I'm going to go tell this person. And the person goes, I don't want to know about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong, hey? We, we've got this idea of this good or bad, you know, of, of ways we all should be and, and things. And uh, yeah, and it's, a, it's a tough lesson to learn that everything's just, just as, as that... Uh, that that consciousness is wanting it to be yeah this is a great question can you see the future uh, or past in the field well the problem with that question is we, we simply have no way to scientifically determine uh whether what we were seeing is is accurate uh, when it comes to the future, because as soon as you receive information, you then get to make a new decision point. What you do receive, though, is energy and information of where the future will lead to based on different decision points. 
does everyone acknowledge the difference there? Because remember, your decision shapes the next reality. So, so it's impossible to say to, to say that you saw what was was there. Um, however, you are able to tune into it. We do this great exercise uh, about how learning how to read, you know, the future outcomes, and we do it with sports, and we do we do it with. We're going to be doing it in the intuitive uh, intuition training about okay. There's a sports team that's about to play. And you're going to learn to, to know which one's going to win. And we do a, a, a field reading process with this. And uh, this is very cool and very accurate. However, th that's with a, uh, there's, some, there's some very um, core pre-programmed distinctions with that exercise. One, there will be a game in the future. Two, one of these two teams has to win. See, so, so we're creating some, some very key limitations and then you can pretty accurately uh, with, with a good setup, um, get the right answer. Can our uh, self-conscious influence the response of the superconscious? Uh, no, no. I asked because I had the super, asked the superconscious a close ended question throughout the day, same question. I asked on and off and received the same reply. That very next day I asked a question, but phrasing it took place the day before. I received a no. I asked her that day just like I did. No's were consistent, but increased with strength and intensity. So do you know why? So, so when you're using the muscle testing to get a yes and a no, uh, you must get into innocence first. What's obvious from this question is that uh, you are work, trying to work it out and that you have a pre-programmed response that you're after. But what's obvious by this question, and I, I stopped reading it out, do my other selves get involved? I was time testing the yes and no's, ask a question. So, so how can I trust the responses? And, and it's, a, it's such a good question. And I love it because it, it's, so, it's so obvious that, a, that, that uh, someone who would ask this question is, is completely trying to work it out rather than just receiving what's there because why else would you ask twice? <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> true you know like oh i kept on asking asking i kept getting the same answer well maybe that's the answer <laughs> you know a, a, a lot of times our uh, self-conscious still wants to work it out and also What's funny is sometimes you get the correct answer from the superconscious, but it looks like destruction. In the in the in the current reality, it looks like destruction. And however, it's a creation of what you really want. You see, it, maybe it's what you really want. And one of the hardest, actually, Bria, if not the hardest thing to do, is to follow through on your superconscious guidance when it just seems wrong. When it just seems crazy and wrong, that's the hardest thing to do. However, when you do it, wow, the results that turn up are magic. The results are, the results are absolutely magic. So can you make a true choice from a limited perspective? For instance, if someone only knows about monogamy and therefore chooses monogamy because that's the only thing they know, uh, is it a true choice? It's a very contextual question, I'd say, Kat. <laughs> I love you, Melanie. <laughs> I knew I was allowed to have that joke with you. <laughs> Uh, Kat, I think it's a very contextual question. Uh, and so the answer is, uh, I think that 
uh, our education does does play a part on the way that we choose. I so that that's what I think. So so I think that a, a true choice is just what you would love. Okay, a true choice is just what you would love, and and what you would love when you come down to it, it is a feeling. What I feel this question is focused on is the vehicle, whether it's monogamy or non-monogamy or polyamorous or whatever else you're referring to, um, which is the vehicle. You know, the, the true end result is love. I think that uh, that is what they're, to, to, love, to be in love, to have love, if that's what's true there for them. Uh, I do believe that, we, that that's true, but people can limit how they can get there. Does that make sense, Kat? I think that the question is very um, focused on the vehicle to get somewhere rather than just um, focusing uh, on the uh, on what they would love. You see what I'm saying? So it's a very self-conscious um, orientation. So can you make a true choice from a limited perspective? Uh, no. True choice comes from expansive perspective, asking one open-ended question, what would I love to create knowing that I already am it? True. Even though I'm completely satisfied in life, what would I love to create more of? You see that? That's an open, expanded question coming from a place of already abundance. Second part of the question, when going into possibility, how can someone know if they're really seeing a variety of choices if they're coming from their limited perspective? You know, that the, uh, you know Kat, Kat, you're in our cert, known you for, for a long time, but, but the, these questions, they're, 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 they're missing the point, which is we don't wanna come from a limited perspective when we're making our choices. So, so go, go into possibility, asking the open-ended question, but, but coming from a place where you're already whole, you already are complete, so that you, you, you're already complete, so you already have it. What I get from this question is there's an agenda that and, and and the agenda is you're trying to poke out why people aren't allowing them to see a worldview that you'd like them to see. It feels like there's an agenda behind it rather than going, well, you already are love. You can already give yourself as much love. And then what would you love to see? You know, it's almost like, uh, and cause I, cause I know the movements that you want to create It's almost like you're trying to find a way here to, 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 point out the fact that they're limiting what they would really love. That, that's what I get from it, uh, which is really nice uh, to observe, uh, you know, observe ourselves. Well, I really want to, to do this. So there's a bit of an agenda, I feel. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, there we go, guys. That was a fun hour. And uh, I got through all the questions that I had ready for today. Who enjoyed it? Uh, who will be uh, coming to the next one. Make sure you're looking at, at your emails uh, and I'll let you know when they're live. I'll be posting this out uh, on, uh, on YouTube. If you've got questions, I've got answers. So love you all. Stay magnetic, stay focused. And uh, I'm looking forward to whenever we do the next one of these and answering all your fabulous questions. Uh, talk to you all very soon and uh, see you in the course. Bye for now. You've got questions and I've got answers.